check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go, your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts oh. and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Hello and welcome to the podcast, For and About Detroit Artists and Entertainers. I am Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. And on today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, if you're an artist or you're an entertainer, how do you balance that with family life, especially when you have mm-hmm. kids? Because our guest this week does, he's a very funny stand-up comedian. Welcome yes, back to the he show. he is. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Zach Martina. Hey, guys. Uh, you got a new album out. It's called Not the Worst Dad. That's right. It has been out for a full day now. Yay. <laughs> so. It was breaking news on the debris. That's here. right. So when is your next show that people can catch you live? Um, well, I'm going to be gone this week. So you guys are hearing this and I'll be gone. But next week I'm going to be back in town and I'm going to be at uh, Baker's of Milford on Friday, March 6th. And uh, I grew up in that area. Mm. I started drinking at that bar. Um, I feel very comfortable in that space. So it's <laughs> it could get weird. It's a hometown show yeah, for real. It could get weird. It'll be a fun one. <laughs> All right, Becky, let's uh, start off with some trivia. Okay, so yesterday we talked about the Boonchkis and uh, touched on Hamtramck, so I thought I'd continue with the Hamtramck theme. Hamtramck's a two-square-mile city, completely surrounded by Detroit, except for a little tiny common border with the city of Highland Park, so sort of city within a city. Super diverse, started with your Polish immigrants, 21st century brought a lot of people from Yemen, Bangladesh, other areas. The current population of Hamtramck is... 21,716. Okay. So it's bigger than which of these Metro Detroit cities, except for one. So it's bigger than three of these. What do you think of this list is actually bigger than Hamtramck? Highland Park, Birmingham, Ferndale, or East Point? Bigger population than Hamtramck. Which one of those has a bigger population than Hamtramck? And Hamtramck has, you know, 21,700. You know, it's funny. I don't... Detroit has uh, Metro Detroit has all these weird townships and they're mm-hmm. all, you know, like I lived in Clawson for a while and Clawson is got to be like two square blocks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a few more than that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The city I, I live in is I, one square I'm mile. I'm pretty sure yeah. I was in the only apartment building in Clawson. That's mm-hmm. the thing about Ferndale. I feel like Ferndale is bigger, but not that much bigger. I would, you know what I mean? I would, you know, cause Troy is obviously bigger, Huge. right? Cause it's just spread out and sprawling, yeah. mm-hmm. but that wasn't a choice. So what not were the choices choice. again? Highland Park. Birmingham, Ferndale, and East Point. Is Birmingham big? I think Birmingham is too exclusive to uh, like the amount. It's expensive. It's so expensive. And we're expensive. talking population. I, yep, I so. avoid Birmingham. I don't like going. Ugh, Anytime gross. I walk through Birmingham, I Unless feel like I'm under No, 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 it's great. Yeah. Um, you have to be done. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with East Point. Okay. I'm going gonna, gonna to go with Ferndale. So uh, this is for one of you. And it's for Zach. East Point. Oh. That's right. Oh. Yes. I yes. feel like that's a lovely place to raise a family. Isn't it though? <laughs> yeah. And the thing about Hamtramck too is it's incredibly dense. You mm-hmm. know, to have that two square mile. So it's the densest of those I listed as well. When my daughter lost her first shoe, she came up to me and she goes, the tooth fairy's coming. I go, how much do you think you're going to get for that? She goes, one million dollars. <laughs> no. <laughs> if your teeth were worth a million dollars, I'd have knocked them out a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> That's a, uh, another taste of the new album. It's mm-hmm. called Not the Worst Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of kids, you got a wife. You got kids. Mm-hmm. They're young, seven, nine. Mm-hmm. You know, but being a comedian involves lots of late night, no- late nights. Mm-hmm. You're up, you're out, you're traveling. Like, how do you balance that all and stay connected to your family and somewhat sane? It's hard. Um, it's a lot of. I mean, it's, when I'm gone, it's a lot of uh, FaceTimes and uh, phone calls and just trying to find out what happened in their day, trying to find out about their friends because I feel like. You know, when they talk to you about their friends, they're kind of giving you a little glimpse into their life. So just trying to stay engaged from afar and then um, exponentially more so when I'm home. So, you know, after shows on the weekend, uh, after the late show, as soon as I'm off stage, I get in the car and I drive through the night so I can have, you know, that extra day with them rather oh, nice. than um, have to worry about, you know, sleep or whatever, but uh, get home and then I can make, you know, it makes it so I can make some of their gymnastics meets or their cheer competitions. And, uh, you know, we can do make your own pizza night. Won't, you know, we always just try and do a bunch of family stuff. So I just, uh, I try to be engaged. I just try to be there just involved. Yeah. I mean, 
you have to make it a priority. And for as much as my wife and kids support what I'm doing and believe in me doing what I'm doing, um, it's, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. And as it makes it so easy to make them my priority because, uh, before them, I know this is about to get real corny, but, uh, I did not know I was capable of that kind of love. Aww. So, uh, it's really, it's easier, uh, it's easier than it sounds for me. Yeah. For you. I know that's yeah. not true for everybody. Well, and I imagine too, cause you're not only a creative, uh, an entertainer, but you're also an entrepreneur. I mean, this is your solo business, well, let's, right? Let's not, I mean, let's not, let's not bring the financials into well, it. Not, cause I am not, okay, I am not a not successful entrepreneur, <laughs> but you are, <laughs> you're doing this full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're a one man show doing it yourself. Mm-hmm. So I haven't I, lost money. Let's put it that way. I haven't lost money. Well, yet. that's good. Yeah. But then it also has to be somewhat hard to turn it off because you could always be promoting. You could always be like trying to get your next show. You could always be, you know, but yeah. with it sounds like for you, you're like, no, I'm with my family. I'm not looking at that stuff. I mean, I'm still on, mm-hmm. but as a, like, so are they, you know, like we have ah, fun together. Yes. We're riffing bits and having fun and just talking about each other's day. And, um, really early on, they learned to, they learned a very valuable lesson for life that, um, if you are ever going to laugh at anyone else, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. Yes. So we can all take a pretty good natured ribbing, which is, uh, which is good. And it makes, it makes dinner super fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have your kids seen you on stage? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, <laughs> and I did not clean it up for them because we, uh, we have some rules in my house where my daughter is there nine and seven. I I'm fine with them, uh, swearing inside the house or cussing or whatever, provided they can give me the definition of the word and two synonyms. So oh. I just don't want them to sound dumb. I exactly. want them to be able to use the words in the correct context. And, uh, that, uh, my, uh, my oldest daughter dropped a real nice shit the other day and, uh, I wasn't mad cause it was Absolutely correct. It was in context. Uh-huh. It was yes. it was correct. Uh, the first time they saw me was two Father's Days ago. It was in uh, Chicago, and um, it was a, probably a, a forty to fifty people, and they were a tight crowd. Um, and I have it on audio, and it's so fun to listen to because there are people like there's just timid laughs, and they're like, Ugh, but then all of a sudden you hear these tiny little laughs <laughs> of my daughters in the back, and um, it's one of my favorite things because That's so cute they know the stories they know um they know where it's coming from they understand the idea of a joke and the exaggeration of it and it was really cool that they got to see me do that cuz i don't think they really ever understood what it was i did but i'll never forget the way they looked at me when i got off stage it was it was super cool well i think that's true for kids no matter what your parents do mm-hmm. you really don't know what they do for sure so <laughs> if you literally had take your daughter to work day and they could see it that's pretty nice yeah it was uh, it's fun how do they feel cuz i you know, they're, they're in your material. How do mm-hmm. they feel about that? Um, they like it. They know it's, um, they, they like it now. Let's put it that way. As I say, sure teenagers, uh-uh. we'll see how it goes, but I hope that, uh, I hope it stays true that they can appreciate a good joke, especially like a, a well done joke. And they can understand that I'm not just ragging on them. I mean, a majority of my humor is, you know, dark and about me. So about my shortcomings and everything. And, and they're just players in it. Um, so they love it. I mean, I went to lunch with, um, I went to lunch with my daughters today cause I'm leaving for tour and, um, they, that their whole cl- class just, they're like, Hey, tell me this joke. Oh, I have this joke. I have this joke. Like they're all into it. They think it's cool. Yeah. So we'll see how long that lasts. You have a much cooler job than I'm sure a lot of dads. I have so. a much cooler job, but also a very physically intimidating look. I cannot tell you how these little kids oh. look at a guy that looks like <laughs> <That's true>. me. <laughs> like he doesn't belong here. Mm-hmm. I don't know about uh, restraining orders, but he shouldn't be within a hundred <laughs> yards of this school the way he looks. <laughs> <laughs> When you've got a family, and I don't just mean your daughters, but but anybody or even friends, uh, have you ever had a joke that they they were not comfortable with because it was about them, or do you have a no, line? I don't care. So you don't have a line mentally that I I don't I don't dive into like other people's lives. It's my life. It's my experience. So I mean, it's I'm I'm the center of it. I don't delve too far from the truth. Obviously there will be some exaggerations, but they are tethered to the honesty at the core of it. And, um, I mean, if my wife were to get upset at a joke, if she were, if she found something to be uh, a little too far, a little too much, um, 
I would probably back off, but you'll hear on this new album, Not the Worst Dad, she's got a great <laughs> sense of humor. Yeah. She lets me get away with a lot of stuff. She's the keeper. She understands the tech. Like, I'll tell her jokes too. She's like, well, you should not You should end the joke with this word and not that word because that's the funny word. Like, she understands the technicalities of it. Mm. Right. So, uh, Did yeah. Did she she's, always or is that something that uh, over uh, time? She's seen a lot of bad comedy. Yeah. She comes. She's come to a lot of uh, open mics and uh, she's come to a lot of professional shows and she's definitely – it's fun watching her in the crowd while I'm on stage or watching other comics because uh, you can tell that, you know, as much as someone who doesn't do comedy, it can. She's studying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that's fascinating. All right, guys, let's get into some event recommendations. Becky, we'll start with you. Sure. So I think if you're at all interested in filmmaking or acting, there's a really cool thing this weekend, this Saturday, February 29th, the Motion Picture Institute. Now, a lot of people still don't know about the school. It's in Troy, so very close. And it's got full on movie sets in there and has a year program to learn all the fundamentals of filmmaking and fundamentals of acting. And they create films there. So you can go check it out, meet the teachers, see what all the equipment is like. They got state of the art stuff and talk to graduates and even do like some hands on play around with some things and and start acting. Zach, have you ever dabbled in filmmaking? I know, for example, Dave Landau uh, mm -hmm. made a movie back he in the did. day. Different comedians have different other mediums that they like to play I'll do, with. like sketches and, and short videos. I mean, and I'll, I'll write some stuff, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could wrap my head around creating a film. That being said, I would love to do it. Um, it's just something that I really haven't, uh, haven't considered. What is, what do you want to do with your career? I mean, is it, is it, I you like great jokes, a, man. A, a touring comic? Is it, you want to, you know, I'm happy or write for TV shows or I'm as long, I mean, I'm happy, uh, out there on the road, generating new material that I'm proud of and, uh, speaking about things that I, I find amusing and I, I care about. Um, as long as I guess my voice, it can be directed, but as long as it isn't censored, um, I will be mm -hmm. fine in writing in any capacity, performing in any capacity, uh, acting is hard, but I like to, I like to be animated and I like to get loud and yeah, I don't know. I just, I just want to, I just want to perform. Is acting, how different of a craft is it compared to stand up comedy? I haven't done very much of it, but in the few that, in the few times that I have, it's, um, stand up. You can just, I'm such an energy comic. Like I ride waves of energy and I, I, I take the crowd with me and if they're not enjoying it, I can feel that. But if I can get them on board the way that I try to, I can really ride that wave like a surfer. Whereas, um, acting is just, there's a lot more emotion to it. You know, you're just kind of in these moments and, uh, you really have to remove yourself from yourself. Uh, so it's definitely something that a, a skill set that I, 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 really respect, but I don't, I don't fully understand. Cool. Well, uh, you have an event recommendation? Um, comedy, uh, Dusty Slay is going to be at the, uh, comedy castle. He's been on Fallon a few times and, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a Tennessean, Tennessee boy. Very, very funny. And, uh, he airs on the, uh, you know, the cleaner side of things. He, he'll, he'll take some risks and he's very, very funny, but, uh, you know, this is something that, uh, you could do with the, teen family. I wouldn't take uh, the kids just because it's a Friday, Saturday, Thursday nightclub, but uh, yeah, go see Dusty Slay at the Comedy Castle. By the way, that's one of those places that if you haven't been in a while, it's worth it. Just to, uh, That's just such a the great, great. Yeah, it's a great space. Oh. Well-run club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that space. Uh, hey, Thursday and Friday night, um, there's something going on that I'm thinking about going to. Okay. Look, my favorite reality TV show, you know what it is? So you think you can dance. So you think you can. I don't know yes. why. I don't watch a lot of reality TV. When I do, I don't like Do you shows. watch it alone and dance during uh, it? Do you think you can yeah. dance? You know what it is? It, like, like you're talking about with acting, uh, I watch uh, uh, people dancing and I'm just so in awe. Yeah, Because it's I cannot mm -hmm. do that with my body at all. Mm -hmm. And and I will admit, I can tell when there are nights where I haven't gotten enough sleep because I start crying to some routine on So You Think You Can Dance. And, and every, I'm just like, Well, there are some really me. emotional pieces There are some on really this. emotional Seriously. pieces. There are. The modern dance. Oh, yeah. So, and, and every year that, you know, they go out on tour and I say, I'm going to go. And oh, I've never I went gone. to the last one. It was 
the, the Royal See, Music we Theater. We can't be friends. That was it good. It was good. Did you cry? Um, um you know, a little tears. Only here. when it was over. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> it was too fast. Here's the next best thing. Thursday and Friday night, the 91st annual Spring Dance Concert is coming to the Bonstell Theater at Wayne State. They do this every year. They've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and so, if you want to get some dance, uh, you want to go see it, uh, and something that uh, you don't normally see that often, this is a good opportunity to go check it out. Zach Martina is going to be handing, uh, hanging out with us all week. The new album is called Not the Worst Dad. Great to have you on again. Yes, it's so exciting. I know. Such a the fun energy time. Is great. Uh, and people can get the album anywhere. Yeah. It's so just Spotify. Online. Uh, yeah. Just just look up Zach Martina. Uh, Z-A-C-H. That's right. Z-A-C-H-M-A-R-T-I-N-A. While you're online, you can also find our podcast. It's in Spotify as well. You can also say, Alexa, enable the debrief podcast. That's an easy way to listen to us. Becky, let's close out with a song. Yeah. So for the rest of this week, I thought I would play some local artists that are playing the Hamtramck Music Festival, because that's also going on this week, um, Thursday through Saturday. So starts tomorrow through Saturday, 27th through the 29th. A $15 wristband gets you like 200 bands. And I think there's about 25 venues. So this is one of the bands, um, Blue Flowers. And the song I picked is Uncivil War. This is a husband and wife songwriting duo along with their band. So check out Uncivil War. Great. Until tomorrow, Detroit's moving. Keep up.
Brother D. Brave. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. 